Alexander Fleming Fleming's discovery of penicillin marked a breakthrough in treating bacterial infections, a leading cause of death worldwide. Penicillin's ability to combat infections caused by bacteria such as Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, and Pneumococcus revolutionized medical practice and dramatically improved patient recovery rates. Some studies even estimate that penicillin has saved as many as 200 million lives since its discovery. In 1928, while studying the properties of Staphylococcus bacteria, Fleming noticed that a mold called a Penicillium notatum had contaminated one of his petri dishes and was inhibiting the growth of the bacteria. On examining it, he observed that the mold produced a substance that killed the bacteria surrounding it. Realizing the potential significance of this observation, Fleming conducted further experiments to isolate and purify the active substance produced by the mold. He named the substance penicillin and demonstrated its potent antibacterial properties, showing that it could effectively kill many harmful bacteria while sparing human cells. Ivan Pavlov Ivan Pavlov was a Russian scientist who won the Nobel Prize in 1904 for studying how animals like dogs digest food. Although Pavlov's Nobel Prize-winning idea was awarded for his work on digestion, his discovery of the conditioned reflex, showing how environmental cues like sounds and smells can trigger animal behavioral responses, became one of his most famous scientific contributions. While doing his experiments, he discovered something fascinating. Dogs could learn to associate certain sounds or sights with food. For example, Pavlov found that if he rang a bell every time he fed the dogs, Eventually, they would start drooling just at the sound of the bell, even if no food was present. This discovery, called classical conditioning, was big because it showed how animals could be trained to respond to specific signals. It changed how we understand how creatures learn and behave. His research advanced our understanding of physiology and impacted our understanding of psychology and the study of learning and behavior, especially in developing behavioral therapy techniques which are used to treat phobias, anxiety disorders, and other psychological problems. Albert Einstein while Einstein is famous for his theory of relativity, his work on the photoelectric effect won him the Nobel Prize. His ideas revolutionized our understanding of space, time, and gravity, laying the groundwork for numerous scientific advancements in modern physics. He received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1921 for his discovery of something called the photoelectric effect. And it was this discovery that helped us understand how light and electrons behave. Before his theory, scientists thought light only behaved like waves. But Einstein suggested it's more like a stream of tiny particles, which we now call photons. To help you understand, try to picture light as tiny packets of energy called photons. When these packets hit certain materials, they can knock out electrons, like how a billiard ball can knock another ball into motion. This is what we call the photoelectric effect. This discovery was a big deal because it helped us understand light and electricity better. It also led to new technologies like solar panels, digital cameras, and other inventions that continue to shape the modern world. Dorothy Crowfoot Hodgkin One of Hodgkin's most significant contributions to science was her determination of the structure of penicillin, the first antibiotic to be discovered. Using X-ray crystallography, she successfully clarified the three-dimensional arrangement of atoms in penicillin, providing important insights into how it works and contributing to the development of new antibiotics. With the introduction of antibiotics, infectious diseases that previously killed billions of people and rendered millions severely disabled were now easy to treat with a full course regimen. Dorothy Hodgkin conducted her doctoral research under the supervision of Nobel laureate J.D. Bernal. During her study, Hodgkin applied X-ray crystallography to determine the structure of many essential molecules, including vitamin B12 and insulin. Her work on insulin in particular was groundbreaking as it revealed the detailed molecular structure of this hormone, which plays a vital role in regulating blood sugar levels and is essential for treating diabetes. She was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for all her innovative work in 1964. She was not only the first British woman to win a Nobel Prize in Chemistry, but also the second ever woman to be awarded the Order of Merit, one of the highest honors in the United Kingdom. Herman Mueller 
Herman Mueller's research discovered how radiation causes mutations by experimenting on his fruit flies. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1946 for his discoveries concerning the effects of X-rays on genetic material. He discovered that X-rays could induce mutations in the genetic material of the flies, leading to changes in their physical characteristics and traits. He also realized that the degree of mutation increased with more radiation exposure. After after this discovery, Mueller worked tirelessly to tell the world about the dangers of radiation exposure. It was when the Nobel Committee recognized his work that public attention was drawn to the health effects of nuclear fallout, especially in the aftermath of of the 1945 atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. His research has helped us understand how genetic mutation works and the role of environmental factors like radiation, chemicals, and other agents in shaping genetic material. Nelson Mandela Nelson Mandela, the iconic South African leader, was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1993 for his remarkable efforts to dismantle apartheid and promote reconciliation in South Africa. Mandela dedicated his life to fighting against the oppressive system of apartheid, which enforced racial segregation and discrimination in South Africa. Because he fought for rights as basic as using the same bus or beach with a white person, he was imprisoned for 27 years in Rhode Island. When he left prison in 1990, everyone expected him to take up arms and fight against his oppressors. But instead, he told his supporters to forgive what was done to them and try to reconcile. With him saying quotes such as, Forgiveness liberates the soul, it removes fear. It was agreed that few could do what he did that day, so he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize three years after his release. He was later elected as South Africa's first black president in 1994. During his presidency, he worked to unite a divided nation and promote social justice, equality, and reconciliation. After serving five years as president, he refused to run for a second term and was succeeded by his younger deputy. Frederick Banting and John McLeod. We have Banting and his friend Charles Best to thank for the discovery of insulin, which provided the first effective treatment for diabetes mellitus, a previously incurable and life-threatening disease. This has since saved millions of lives and transformed diabetes management worldwide. Banting first became interested in diabetes after observing the devastating effects of the disease on patients, particularly children, during his medical practice. Later, in 1921, Banting thought of the idea of extracting a pancreatic substance to regulate blood sugar levels and treat diabetes. With the contributions of his colleague Charles Best, Banting began conducting experiments at the University of Toronto to isolate this substance. Banting and Best's initial experiments yielded promising results demonstrating the pancreatic extracts could lower blood sugar levels and reduce the effects of diabetes. Recognizing the potential significance of their findings, Banting and Best sought the expertise of John McLeod, a renowned physiologist at the University of Toronto, to further their research. McLeod provided support and resources to continue the experiments, including laboratory space and additional personnel. By January 1922, they successfully isolated a substance they named insulin and demonstrated its ability to lower blood sugar levels effectively. Marie Curie Building on the work of Henri Becquerel, who discovered the phenomenon of radioactivity, Marie Curie's Nobel Prize-winning idea came from her investigation into the properties of radioactive elements, particularly uranium and thorium. Marie Curie faced significant challenges and discrimination as a woman in the male-dominated scientific community of her time. For example, she was initially denied a university position in France because of her gender, and male colleagues sometimes took credit for her work. In spite of this, her perseverance, dedication, and brilliance led to the discovery of two new radioactive elements. In 1898, Marie Curie found a radioactive substance called polonium in pitchblende, a dark radioactive mineral that contains uranium and other elements. Her work also had profound implications for chemistry, physics, and medicine, inspiring generations of scientists to explore the mysteries of the atomic world. In 1903, she and her husband Pierre Curie were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics. Enrico Fermi Enrico Fermi was an Italian physicist renowned for his contributions to nuclear physics and quantum mechanics. In 1934, Fermi conducted experiments with his colleagues, including his wife Laura Capone and physicist Franco Rossetti, where they bombarded various elements with neutrons. 
They discovered that when neutrons were slowed down or moderated by a substance like paraffin wax, they were more likely to induce nuclear reactions in other atomic nuclei. He also discovered nuclear fission, the process by which the nucleus of an atom splits in two or more smaller nuclei, releasing a large amount of energy. In 1938, Fermi and his team successfully demonstrated nuclear fission in uranium, releasing additional neutrons and initiating a chain reaction. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1938 for discovering nuclear reactions caused by slow neutrons, which led to the development of nuclear energy and atomic bombs. Enrico Fermi's Nobel Prize winning idea revolutionized our understanding of nuclear physics and had far-reaching implications for both peaceful and military applications of nuclear energy. The 14th Dalai Lama Tenzin Gyatso, the 14th Dalai Lama, was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1898 for his consistent efforts to resolve the conflict between Tibet and China peacefully. Born in 1935 in northeastern Tibet, Tenzin Gyatso was recognized as the reincarnation of the 13th Dalai Lama at a young age and was crowned as Tibet's spiritual and political leader at the age of 15. However, his leadership was soon challenged by the Chinese Communist government, which asserted control over Tibet in the 1950s. He remained committed to nonviolence and dialogue as the most effective means of achieving Tibetan rights and freedoms in the face of exile from Tibet in 1959, following a failed uprising against Chinese rule. He believes that violence only gives way to more violence, and that genuine and lasting peace can only be achieved through peaceful means, the most powerful weapon for overcoming oppression and injustice. Despite the Chinese government's attempts to slander and discredit him, the Dalai Lama has engaged in dialogue with leaders from around the world, including Chinese officials, hoping to find a peaceful and mutually acceptable solution to the Tibetan issue. He has also advocated for protecting human rights, religious freedom, and environmental conservation on a global scale. Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964 at age 35 for his nonviolent resistance to racial prejudice and social injustice in the United States. He was the youngest recipient of the award at the time. MLK became a central figure in the American civil rights movement, advocating for equality and justice through peaceful protest and civil disobedience. One of MLK's most famous speeches, I Have a Dream, delivered during the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom in 1963 showed his vision of a future where people would be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the contents of their character. This powerful message resonated with millions of Americans and aroused widespread support for the civil rights movement. Besides fighting against racism, King also spoke out against poverty, war, and violence. He advocated for true peace through fairness and equality, emphasizing that justice should be universal regardless of individual background. He led marches, sit-ins, and boycotts to challenge unfair laws that kept African Americans from having the same rights as others. Mother Teresa Mother Teresa dedicated her life to serving the poorest of the poor, those who were homeless, sick, and dying, particularly in the slums of Calcutta. Also known as St. Teresa of Calcutta, she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1979 for her humanitarian work and commitment to soothe the suffering of society's most vulnerable and marginalized individuals. Mother Teresa's famous quote, spread love everywhere you go, let no one ever come to you without leaving happier, shows how her approach to humanitarian work was rooted in the principles of love, compassion, and selflessness. She established the Missionaries of Charity, a religious congregation dedicated to providing care and support to the destitute and dying. The Missionaries of Charity operated soup kitchens, clinics, orphanages, and hospices, offering food, medical care, and companionship to those in need. She believed in the inherent dignity and worth of every human being, regardless of their social status or background, and she sought to treat each person with kindness, respect, and dignity. However, critics have questioned Mother Teresa's approach to helping the poor, including her focus on providing spiritual comfort rather than quality medical care for the sick and the poor living conditions of her volunteers.